Hi, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Um, so I feel very fortunate to be able to moderate this session because I wanted to watch it anyway. But um, here we have Sushyan and Yusuf for context-specific ma mappings. Context-specific mappings. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to our talk on um, context-specific mapping. Um, yeah, it's a 3D um, uh, tongue twister, I guess. Uh, so Sushyan and I are software developers at Dr. Lee. And just to give you a little context uh, about Dr. Lee, so we build solutions uh, for the full uh, flow for both uh, patients and uh, healthcare professionals. Uh, we currently operate in three countries, that are France, Germany, and, um, and Italy. And these countries, of course, they have their different uh, regulations. Um, and for this reason, for regulatory reasons, um, we had to use um, FHIR to become um, interoperable with other systems uh, in the three countries which we operate. Um, but we already existed for a while and we have so much, so much data. And uh, of course, this data is, a, is based on a different data model than FHIR. So in order to, um, to, uh, to become interoperable, we either have to build a native FHIR server or maybe we do a FHIR facade. But the option that was really um, what going to work for us in the short term was at least to use um, a fire facade. Uh, because if we have to use the native fire server, we have to do so much migrations and all this stuff that's um, time consuming and would take a lot of resources. So we went with a, with a facade approach. Now to understand the architecture of, um, of our market engine, which we also call the facade, uh, say if a client were to uh, make a request to get, say, uh, some patients from Dr. Lee. Uh, so what happens is that it goes through the API gateway to the mapping engine. And then this mapping engine fetches um, the patient data from, from the Dr. Lee APIs and then maps it into um, fire patients and then return um, the response back to the client. Now, this approach um, meant that we have to also, um, we have to, um, make some, uh, we, we have some certain challenges, mainly because we are dealing with multiple IGs. Uh, and if you have come across some of these IGs, they can have so many differences between them. Um, if we decide that we want to say, build a single um, mapping logic somewhere, we have to start having these branching conditions and so on, just to cater for the different um, IGs. And um, of course, they also have similarities. If you have different mappings for them also, there will be some repetitions if we don't uh, manage these, uh, these um, similarities properly. Um, just for context, uh, the stack we are using is Kotlin. Uh, it's a language of JVM and uh, really pretty neat language, also very good when it comes to uh, null safety. Uh, we're also using Spring Boot. Uh, as a framework because it gives us um, some room as far as configurability is concerned. And uh, we have people in house who are um, subject matter experts on, on Spring Boot. And of course, Happy Fire, I think everybody knows about Happy Fire, so I don't have to go uh, into that uh, that much. But math uh, so that in house there was a debate, should we use um, Fire mapping language? Or should we use math struct and so on? We went with math struct. Um, if there, there may be questions regarding that later, but we can discuss it. But Mastrop gave us, um, uh, like, it, it, so to understand how Mastrop works is, uh, it's a, uh, a code generator, basically. So what it does is that you write this declarative uh, mappings from one object to another, and then Mastrop creates the actual implementation for that. And then um, it is also now safe, uh, type safe, and, uh, most importantly, it's, it's uh, supports context. Uh, so there'll be more on that um, later. Now, the first approach we took um, regarding um, dealing with the different contexts and the different IGs was uh, to merge all these IGs into, say, if you have like a, uh, an IG for a, uh, a profile for a patient uh, A and another profile B for, for patient also, the idea is what happens if you merge this uh, into a single superset? And that was the idea we had initially. So in this example, if you have, say, a patient with extension X and another patient um, profile with extension Y, for example, if you match these two supersets into one, 
then we might have like a, a profile with extensions X and Y in there. Uh, that was the idea. And it was working for us um, for just for a while. Um, now, there, there are some, of course, there's, a, there's an advantage to that, uh, some advantages, but mainly the, the, the most important one is the fact that we only get to focus on one single implementation. So you don't start having all this branch logic everywhere and so on. So it reduces complexity for us. But uh, the, the challenge with that is that you, if you have, a, if you make a request uh, for, to get a patient and you are, you're basically focusing on, say, a, a particular profile, but you have this big blob of response that has uh, content from other patient from another profile, which is unnecessary sometimes, but uh, it's something we are ready to live with. Um, so that that was uh, the approach we went to, and all was good, of course, all is good. And then um, until we got ourselves into a situation where we have um, profiles that basically could not agree on anything. Uh, look at this example for it's something that has been discussed uh, during these um, um, dev days. Uh, say you have, for example, a, a profile that's required that there must be a patient, and there is another profile that says there mustn't be a patient, and that there, there is no way to create a union between these two. That say, okay, uh, is there is there a possibility to create a, a profile that allows for the, for a patient to exist? And not not all, but and. So this was something that was uh, that was impossible for us to achieve using a uh, superset approach. Uh, and then, uh, so we had to look for something uh, better. Sushan. Yep. Thanks. Yeah. So we, we we went back to the drawing board and started evaluating our options. Like we can't really work with the superset option. So what can we actually do? Well, one main idea would be to, of course, work with the regulatory bodies who actually come up with these IGs. Uh, have an open communication and maybe help get help on both sides, uh, make profile profiles relevant yet compatible. Um, but that's that's a long term process. There's a lot of to and fro with it, a lot of communication and decision making, and uh, no one's got time. <laughs> Everyone has deadlines to meet and certifications to achieve. So we could uh, start having separate mapping engines for each and every incompatible IG that we wanted to support. And that was a consideration. Um, but we also thought maybe let's figure out if, if it's possible to actually support all these incompatible IGs in one mapping engine. And we did go with that approach. We came up with something called context-specific mapping. Fancy word, doesn't, doesn't really, uh, is not as complex as it sounds. Essentially, it's just one mapping engine. Uh, which is responsible to receive all the fire requests from, from the external services uh, with some context information, of course, uh, pulls the data from our databases, works some mapping magic into it, and finally gives out a fire resource. Now, let's break it down, which we did. So the mapping, file, the mapping logic for every single resource is, is, is quite, quite big and quite complex. So we tried, decided to break it all down into various specific small mappers. Uh, you can see in this diagram, we have something called resource mappers and something called component mappers, which are responsible to map only specific attributes in a profile. Uh, before we actually understand how that actually works, a little bit of context as, as Yusuf already introduced us to, Dr. Lib works in three countries, each of course having their own national level IGs, their core profiles as well as very use case specific uh, IGs as well. Lots of uh, IGs to deal with. Uh, for our example, let's assume we just have France and Germany and that's our say top level domain. And each of them have their own core profiles. And we also have some very specific use case profiles. Uh, let's say INT in France and MVZ for Germany. Uh, we refer to these as tenants and tenants are always specific to a top level domain. So before we started with context specific mapping, we needed context. So how did we do that? So our mapping engines supported like a whole array of URLs for fire requests. These are pretty uh, common. Uh, what we started doing is we started extracting information from these URLs. So first we have the top level domain or essentially the country, Germany or France. Of course, the fire version and the resource. And if you look at the second one, we also had support for something called the tenant within the URL. So if 
a URL had a tenant, we knew that the mapping that it required or the logic it required was a bit specific. All of this goodness was extracted out in something called the resource providers, which is uh, essentially the entry point to the mapping engine. It would essentially receive the request, extract this information, and after the whole mapping process is over, would actually give back the response. In our case, it was also responsible for fetching the data from the database so that the mapping can actually happen into the file resource. So in our example, if we consider Germany and MVZ as what we want to map for, and let's say this is the profile that we actually want to create for MVZ with its various logic and structures, it started requesting for a resource mapper for patients. And like I said, a resource mapper is supposed to be something that's sort of a coordinator, an orchestrator of actually creating the patient resource. So if you look at the available options, we implemented one patient mapper for the base fire profile, one for the German profile, one for the French, and one for the MVZ specific use case in Germany. For this implementation, we obviously went with MVZ. Now that we had a coordinator, sort of a resource uh, mapper, we started. We actually started need, uh, needing to map all the attributes. So the coordinator then starts figuring out which actual component mappers or essentially attribute mappers we need to create the resource. So let's, for example, take address as an example. Uh, so if you look at all the available address mappers, we had again one for the base fire profile one for the German context, one for the French, and one for the INT specific implementation within France. Now, you see, you might, you might ask why we don't have an MVZ implementation. That was probably because the address implementation for MVZ was the exact same as the address implementation for the German profile, because they're in the same domain, uh, the TLD. So this sort of illustrates how you don't actually have to copy logic from one profile to another just because they're in separate implementation guides. You can basically reuse your small mappers, plug and play essentially, just jigsaw puzzles, put them into where they're required and you're done. So here we selected the address mapper for Germany. Similarly, if we start mapping out all the other attributes as we see for identifier, we have, let's say three examples and we had a very specific use case for MVZ. So we go with that. And similarly, we get mappings done for meta, human name, and birth date. Often, there's also cases when the logic is so simple, we don't actually need to delegate it to a separate mapper. So for example, birth date here, the resource mapper just takes care of it. It's no big deal. So at the end of all of this, the idea is to have the component mappers create the necessary business logic and structure uh, return it all back to the resource mapper, which coordinates all of it, puts it into the big, uh, big fire resource, and finally returns it back. So that's a final look once again at the hierarchy that we had for all our mappers, just if it's not clear enough already. Uh, moving forward, uh, well, ideally, we would not want to do all of these complex stuff just to, just to get our uh, fire resources created. We'd ideally want to have better synergy between authors and implementers, just so that we don't need to uh, run into these uh, messy uh, zero to zero cardinality issues or, or of course, other uh, incompatibilities. And that's it. Thank you, folks. You can find us on Whova, LinkedIn, and email. And yeah, thank you for your time and attention. Thank you so much to both of you. Um, if anyone in the room has questions, I'll walk around and bring the mic. I just ask that you speak really clearly so that people online can hear you. Michael Rinn, my keep sense of friend. Thanks for the presentation. <clears throat> I was still wondering, did you take a look at the all the tooling around that exists already in the fire community? My original assumption would have been that superset approach would have been nice. So you first create the superset and then you know which profile you need to adhere to and kind of just apply that profile because all the profile definitions are computable. And I thought that there would be tools to say that, okay, I have this, this field in instance and make that instance comply to this profile. So take away everything that's not allowed in that profile or just preserve what it requires. So did you do any 
kind of tool map mapping like that and see where that's available um yeah we did actually we we we, we started evaluating the options uh but we sort of landed on this one because of our specific use cases and internal uh, uh, construction of how our data is and how we could actually get all of that out and map it. So mainly due to internal reasons, we had to actually go with this one and not the other one. So, right. Yeah. So but, I yeah. also don't know whether those tools exist, just what just my assumption. Yeah. yeah. Seemed like a lot of manual work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. But I've, I've been working with IGs and I know that when you produce an IG, it actually creates your fire server and there's so much tooling even in there. Mm -hmm. The other thing I'd like just like to mention regarding the synergies between different IG authors, there is a session today, 1.30 at the Freddy, and that is especially for national iGuide authors. And really we are aiming to get people to talk more to each other and kind of naturally bring that cohesion if people learn from each other, but also kind of set up the terminology and so on. Mm -hmm. So we are getting there. I we hope. are, we are. Yeah. <laughs> we are. I mean, we did reach out to a lot of the implementers and a lot of uh, other agencies that are here from Germany to have communication. So it's, it, it's, it's the good thing is everyone's so open to communication and feedback. Like one of the things we received from the people we talked to was it's great that we are, we are providing constant feedback to them and they are providing constant uh, explanations or justifications to their reasonings. So, yeah. Are there any online questions, Dewar? Okay, well, thank you for a great thank session. You. Thank you so much. Thank you.